Hello, Leo. Welcome to your weekly tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is for the week of April 16th through 22nd. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I'm providing. Remember that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And here's a Five of Swords. Um, I think there is a lot of there's a lot of questioning going on with you. I think that there might be some uh, doubts in your mind right now about some things. All right, so we'll get into that. Um, as I lay out our Dove and Serpent spread, I do just want to say that if there's anything you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments. All right. So we've got our Dove and Serpent spread. Let's do our mystery card. Oh, that's a mystery. Let's put our mystery card right there. We're going to put this over here, and I'll see if I can grab that card. Okay, so what jumped out of the deck is this devil energy. So I think this might be something like a key to how we're going to move forward with this, okay? This is kind of going to go with that mystery card. We're going to save this one till the end and see how it might tie in with that and bring everything together at the end, all right? So we did start out with this five of swords. I think that you right now are um, almost going through a little bit of a crisis uh, of faith, uh, faith in yourself, right? I think that you're usually a very confident person, a very outgoing person, um, very assertive, very strong, very powerful, okay? You may be someone who... Um, loves to take on challenges, has tremendous belief in themselves. Uh, you don't shy away from any kind of trouble or any opportunity to any opportunity to act, right? I feel like you're the first person that rushes into a um, you know a dangerous scene or some kind of a, a crisis, some sort of emergency. I feel like you're the first person there, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if you are a first responder. You know, if you work in the medical field, maybe you're with fire, maybe you're with uh, law enforcement or something like that. I feel like you're one of the first people that arrive, you know. I feel like that's just kind of your energy, you know. Um, uh, I think you have that confidence. You have that kind of uh, extroverted vibe about you, usually. This week, though, I'm feeling that there's this little bit of doubt creeping in, you know. I feel like there's something going on with you where... Um, we have, you know, we have a lot of earth energy here. We start with earth in the recent past on the path of the serpent. We have earth, earth, earth. Uh, we also have some of this water surrounding us, okay? So, <clears throat> and then in the middle, we have this, the air that we're dealing with right now. So with this air energy, I think you're kind of, you're taking a breath. You're pausing for a beat to get your bearings, to, um, choose the right strategy to go forward. The thing about air, right, is that it's very penetrating. You know, um, I think we've all heard that expression, you know, when it's very cold or windy, we feel like the air just kind of goes right through us, right? The air has that tendency, sort of like water, but in water is just a more passive kind of way. Water usually settles to the bottom of whatever container. It'll find the cracks to slip through, but it settles, right? The air, on the other hand, expands in every direction. It explores every corner, looking for that crack, looking for that entrance through the a little gap in your door sill to get into your house and give you that draft, you know? I feel like that's kind of the mode that you're in now. You're looking for the exact right crack in this thing to go through, right? To penetrate into the, the future that you want, the success, the progress that you're looking for, okay? So I think that this is, like I said, you're, you're pausing for a beat. You're taking a breath. You're trying to assess the situation and figure out where the wind is blowing, where you can, where you can be like the wind, right? And get through this situation, find the, the perfect little entryway, right? The perfect little gap in the 
um, the seams of this thing, right? The good news is we've got the Mercury energy crossing your path this week. So this is a real, this is a real wisdom about this. Okay, whatever you're working on, whatever this, I, I think it may be something related to your career, your work life, um, maybe what you do for money because of all these earth cards here. It feels like there's some money involved here somewhere. Um, but it's definitely some some work, some physical work that you do, uh, you know, like on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? You've got this Mercury energy. So you're going to get this flash of, of insight, this strategy. The answer is going to come to you like a lightning bolt from the heavens, okay? And what it illuminates is going to be not concerned with whether it vibes with your desires or not, okay? The answer that you're going to receive may not be the answer that you're looking for, okay? The way forward might not be as pretty as you were hoping it would be. Do you know what I mean? Uh, the thing about Mercury is that this energy, the magus, the magician, will give you your answer. If you ask for it, you, you'll receive it. But Mercury will always get the last laugh. There may be a twist of irony to this. It may not be exactly what you thought it was going to be. Okay. So I would prepare for that. Um, I also think that you're somebody that typically um, <clears throat> gets these kinds of revelations, these flashes of insight, this wisdom, like, you know, like manna from heaven even. I feel like you get those experiences quite often. I feel like you're a very um, you're a very psychic person, but you're not a very like uh, religious, maybe even not a very spiritual person. Because I feel like to you, this psychic ability is a natural thing. It's like a sixth sense. It's like very scientific for you. You know what I mean? It's just it's another skill that you don't really think is um, it's almost like you don't feel that there's all that much special about it. it's like everybody can do this right so it's just yet another tool that you use and it's not like some magical mystical mystery you know it's just it's kind of a fact of nature all right and I feel like that's how you that's how you view this you know what some would call a gift or a talent um, I'm with you on this. I think everybody possesses these kinds of psychic abilities. Some people are born with a natural um, ability to tune in to that energy. Other people have to work very hard to achieve the clarity. But it's there in latent form in everyone. Some people maybe are, are closer to wielding it than others. You know. So I'm with you on that. But I think it's by way of this kind of psychic sense, this Mercury magician magical energy that you're going to get the answers that you seek. I don't think they're going to look like what you want them to look like. Now, I'm going to skip around here a little bit and I'm going to go to what's up above. <clears throat> this is the top of the path of the dove. This is a nine of cups. This is your ideal. This is what you want things to look like. This is your vision. Okay. And your vision involves your physical, mental, emotional, your spiritual fulfillment, happiness, success, pleasure, all of it. Okay, this is maybe one of the most perfect cards in the tarot. Okay, this is, uh, it's a foundational card, right? This card is um, having this kind of success and this fulfillment. It's almost like it's not, it's not the end goal right? This is not the, the finish line. This is not the end zone. This is the baseline that you need to achieve so that you can pursue the rest of your goals, right? I think you have really, really intense, very lofty, very high aspirations, right? You set the bar really, really high. This is the first bar that we need to get to, this baseline happiness, okay? And this is what you want it to look like. And this is on every plane, again, physical, mental, emotional. So I think that's what you're striving for, okay? Through all of this earth energy, 
uh, and through what we're doing now with the air energy, trying to strategize, trying to find the right crack in this thing for us to penetrate through and pursue this project, this goal, whatever we're working on. I want to go to the immediate future here because I want to show you how it contrasts with your aspirations. With that nine of cups, here we have a seven of cups. These cards look a little different, right? These cards look a little different. And I think that this, it's not talking about us walking into a toxic situation. It's not talking about what we thought was beautiful and perfect is really ugly and decayed and uh, rotting, you know? I don't think that's the message. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think this is the message of Mercury saying what you are destined for, what you're going to achieve is not going to look like the picture that you have in your head, okay? And if you stick too rigidly to your vision and you have no water, thankfully we have water down here, if you have no adaptability, if you're unable to move this water, to allow this water to flow and adapt and adjust, if it's too rigid, if it's too frozen, this water, this vision, um, you're, you're going to miss the boat. You're not going to achieve anything. Okay. So while we have our ideal picture in our head, our vision, what we're manifesting may look a little bit different. It doesn't make it any less valuable, any less successful. Okay. Um, this card is also perhaps a little bit more of this Mercury trickster kind of irony jokes on you kind of thing. You may achieve your vision, right? You may achieve exactly what you want. But what you will realize at some point is maybe you didn't want it as much as you thought. Maybe ultimately it leads to you adjusting your vision, allowing this vision to change, to take shape, to uh, metamorphosize as you grow, as you progress. The vision has to change. If you work for this, you attain this exactly to the detail, eventually you may realize that it's not quite what you thought it would be. It's not quite what you wanted. It doesn't look quite the same now that we've manifested it. So we have to be willing to shift these waters around. Okay, We can't be too rigid with this water energy. Water and rigidity equals just a frozen state. And that's just the water can't flow. There's no progress. Thankfully, what we have beneath everything is this two of cups. So this is water flowing. This is water that can go back and forth. This is water that's, you know, just a fountain that's constantly flowing. Okay. And I think that this is, it's a foundational card. It's beneath your, your path of the dove here. Okay. So what all of this really rests on is your love, your commitment, right? Um, your, your desire, your purpose, the meaning that you have in life to connect with, with others, with your loved ones, with yourself, with success, with the universe, right? You're really looking for that connection. You're looking for this sense of being in harmony with the universe, okay? So this is that energy within you that is the, the basis for all of this work that you're doing. And this is why your ideals, your vision, the picture in your head can change as long as it still has this as its root, as its foundation. Okay. And I think that it always will. I think this is a, um, this is a big factor for you. I think you have a strong sense of destiny, of purpose, of meaning. Even if the details may shift, it may be one thing one day, another thing another day, right? The details can shift. That doesn't mean that you're being 
changeable or that you're vacillating or that you're indecisive or unsure of what you want. No, I think that's being very realistic and very mature about things. We don't have to hold fast to the specific details of what we want because what we want is deeper than the details, right? What they say, the devil is in the details. We get so wrapped up in those details that we miss the bigger picture, what, what it is that we really want. We don't want these things. We want the feeling or the meaning or the purpose that these things allow us to experience, right? Or that we experience uh, reflected in those things, whatever they are, the work, right? The physical work. In the recent past, we do see this Knight of Pentacles. I think this is the hard work that you've done up until now. Um, I think that you've had a recent experience with someone. They may be an earth sign person. Uh, this could be a supervisor at work. It could be someone in, in some sort of position of authority. I think you've lost a little bit of respect for them, honestly. Um, not because they've really necessarily done anything wrong, but I feel like they don't quite have the vision that you have, you know? They're setting their sights too low. They don't have the, the innovative aspirations. They don't have that vision that you have. They don't have this Nine of Cups, this Two of Cups. They probably don't have the Mercury energy right at hand either, right? They just seem like they've set their bar very low and they're comfortable with that and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. But it doesn't really match your energy, okay? So I feel like you're leaving this person. I feel like this person, if you look at the overhead, I feel like this person's watching you leave. I feel like they are content where they are with what they have, with what they've achieved. Their vision seems very small in your eyes compared to your vision, right? And I'm not trying to say you're some elitist or anything like that. I just think you have different, different goals, different levels of attainment. You're at different points of your life, perhaps, something. So there is a, uh, there's a difference here in vision, right? And I do feel like they're kind of watching you they're watching you walk away. Let's go to the path of the serpent now. Because here we see kind of what the work is going to consist of for you. As you progress into this thing, maybe if you are branching out on your own, if you are kind of leaving, um, you know, leaving things, going your own way, if you're quitting, if you're starting your own business. But I feel like you're departing from this rather dull Knight of Pentacles, okay? They may not be an earth sign. I think maybe the earth is representing their kind of heaviness, their, <clears throat> their, um, their complacency, their stagnation, their inertia. They're just, they just want to stay here. It feels good to just sit, right? Where you're ready to sail with all this water. You're really sailing forth. And it is through all of this water energy this water energy, if you, again, if you're looking at the overhead, this water energy feels like it's a big wave, a big cresting wave that you're riding right over. You're, you're surfing this wave. I won't be surprised if you surf. You're surfing this wave over to the path of the serpent. Okay. And I think that, you know, we're talking about the water. We're talking about, ultimately, we started with this five of swords, this self-doubt this questioning things, trying to decide exactly where we should go. I think you're going to figure that out with the help of this Mercury energy. And you're going to surf this wave right into the future, right? Now, I'm from California originally, so the surfing analogy really works for me. I, I don't surf, never have, but, you know, it's a vibe out there. So we're on the path of the serpent. The first thing we encounter is Seven of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles. Um, I feel like you... I feel like this is in the movie where someone sets out 
to do such great things and they have their shirt and tie on, they're very professional, they're very ready to go. Um, and then you cut to a few months later and they're just sprawled out in their apartment with pizza boxes and beer cans everywhere. They haven't shaved, they haven't changed their clothes. You know what I mean? Um, it's almost a sense of just, I got out here and then things just went crazy haywire and uh, you, I've all but given up, you know? So I think that the first six months perhaps of this this new work not new work but this new this new phase of the work that crack that you found in the door sill right and you've penetrated through this new phase i think is going to be rather rough for a few months maybe six months maybe seven months and this is where you'll find um, you're sprawled out on the couch with the pizza boxes and the soda bottles and beer cans and whatever. Um, but you're still doing the work, you know. You're still working at this every day. It just doesn't have the same... Well, it doesn't have the same water. It doesn't have that same wave behind it, right? It's, a, it's almost like you're, you're hoping to catch the next wave now, right? So it may be a rather rough few months. But you're still, like I said, you're still hard at work. It just doesn't have the same excitement that it had. You know? You don't feel the same enthusiasm initially. Again, first few months. But I see that progressing now into a nine of pentacles. This is where you start really to see, it may just be a trickle at first, and then it starts really flooding in this success. It could be financial, it could be uh, whatever, the, whatever the, the job is, you know, whatever success is going to look like in this situation. You're going to begin to see visible progress, okay? And again, it may be rough at first, it may be a little bit slow coming in, you may be progressing so slow that it's imperceptible. But after a few months, it's going to start coming in faster and faster and faster and faster. And then you've got to really, um, you've got to really make some moves in order to keep up with this success. Okay? Because this is a wave that could overwhelm you. Too much success too quickly. It's like the whole, um, you know, winning the lottery um, syndrome. You know, someone that suddenly gets you know, millions of dollars, and it just overwhelms them. Um, it wouldn't overwhelm me. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and test me. Um, but we need to be prepared for it. We need to start kind of putting new systems into place. And that's exactly what we see next with the Six of Pentacles. This is getting the right people in line to help you. Uh, if you have to hire people or other people that are... Um, it's more of a cooperative effort now, okay? And this may not be people. It may just be systems in place, um, you know, computer programs, or I don't know, whatever, whatever you're doing. Getting all the right things in all the right places, okay? So that this becomes a well-oiled machine, right? So that after these few months, you can um, put on a fresh set of clothes, clean the apartment, uh, put on your nice outfit, get your hair done, and you're ready to rock and roll, right? You're ready to step into this. Um, now that really all the hard work is kind of done, you're ready to step into this leadership role and really create this harmony, create this cooperative effort, put everything into its place, and it's going to be like that machine. It's going to like, it's going to be almost a finished product, a finished machine, really. Is, is what I'm feeling and, and seeing. And that, I think, is kind of, uh, kind of nerve-wracking for you. This card's in the position of your fears, worries, and concerns. So maybe part of us likes the initial wave. We like to go surfing. We don't really know what to do when we get to that this now professional state where we've got to be the boss, got to be the leader, we've got to be in charge, and now it's like, okay, this is going to be now the routine for however many years, for the rest of my life, you know, theoretically. 
We like surfing that wave and feeling that rush, feeling that enthusiasm, figuring out how to do it, and then riding that wave. Surfing that wave into the future. That's what feels good, right? That's what really gets the two of cups flowing. Um, so it's, an, it's a rather new thing to be in this leadership position and still be trying to innovate, trying to find new ways to progress, new cracks in the door sill for you to flow through. So this is going to take some getting used to. I think that's the message here. That it is a cooperative effort that you have to make sure that now you don't get overwhelmed by this rather quickly growing um, success, right? You've got you've to really put the systems in place to keep this thing running, okay? The final card on the path of the serpent is this beautiful Empress energy. This is saying, like, look, this is all going to just be a fantastic, wonderful ride. This is going to feel good, even when it doesn't feel good, when we're down here in the Seven of Pentacles, even when it doesn't feel good, it's going to feel good, okay? And you're going to have the opportunity to really produce, to really see results. It's going to be a very fertile time for you, not only in terms of this business, this work, this project, this organization, whatever it is, but in terms of the future, what you're going to be creating, it's like you're you've activated something in yourself now. Like I said at the beginning, you're looking for this nine of cups as the baseline, right? That is like the, the minimum level that you want to achieve. Once you achieve that, you're opening the door to such tremendous creativity. And these two together are really innovative, right? Really finding clever ways to do something new or to change something old into something new. And it's all done with this love, with this creativity, with this compassion and this care for the world around you. You're not just some, you know, it doesn't go to your head. Um, you don't just become arrogant and, and you know, tyrannical. Um, it's really done with this foundation of love. This, this Two of Cups is always going to be down here, I think. So the Empress and Mercury together are really um, creating some amazing things. And Mercury has to kind of take some orders or receive the influence from, from the Empress. Okay, And then Mercury is allowed to create things. But Mercury really shouldn't be allowed to make up their own mind. You know, I think the Magician has a difficult time making up their mind sometimes. And when they do, they like to have a little bit of fun with it. So it needs to be informed by this Empress energy, by this love, by this compassion, by this concern for this thoughtfulness for ourselves, for the world around us. What is it? What is the best thing to do right now? And then Mercury can, can execute, you know? I think that's a really good way to end the path of the serpent because I feel like that is opening up the doors for so many more of these waves for you to surf, you know. Let's go to the mystery card. Mystery card and this devil energy. Let's see how I want to do this. So we, we've got that devil energy and I think that... Um, I kind of feel like the devil energy is what's going to get us out of this seven of pentacles. You know, when we feel kind of like just giving up where it's just like a rat race now, there's really no progress. We're just do we're just day in, day out doing the work. It's the it's the pizza boxes and beer cans all around, right? I think we need the devil energy here because the devil can do two things. It can either keep us chained to this pizza box and beer can life, you know, or the devil card can be that enduring, ambitious, powerful, uh, mountain climbing animal that it is and lift us out of this situation and propel us to that nine of pentacles that's coming next. Okay. So 
this is kind of the 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 choice how we're going to utilize this devil energy when this time comes uh, but what is the confirmation for the reading as a whole um, looking around here what I don't see is fire okay we see the devil which is the fire of the earth right um, it has that kind of fiery aspect to it but it's not a fire card per se right so I'm pretty sure that this mystery card is going to be some fire energy. Now, what kind of fire do we, do we need here? Well, an ace of wands, I think, would be very, would be very fitting here. Um, showing really the, that would show the, the kind of magical wand that Mercury is wielding and holding onto, and that's the directing force, that's the creativity, that's all of the energy and the, uh, the divine fire kind of um, concentrated laser focus. But we didn't have laser focus, right? We started out with this kind of doubt, confusion, uncertainty, looking for the gap in the door sill, the crack in the foundation for this air to flow through, for our wisdom and understanding to go toward. And I'm kind of thinking an eight of wands, right? Because the eight of wands is energy that's scattered in every direction. It's like you're sending out all of your sentinels and um, one of them will find the path, right? Sending, sending uh, our, our uh, scouts in every direction. One of them will come back and say, I found the way. And that's the Eight of Wands, right? And the Eight of Wands is kind of saying, do that quickly. There's the Eight of Wands. And the Eight of Wands is also influenced by Mercury. So it is indeed Mercury holding that Ace of Wands energy, that enlightened spiritual fire, and really shooting it off in every direction that we were, we were talking about that with the five, shooting that off into every direction and to, to see what comes back. It's almost like a, a radar. It's more, it was like we're pinging the, the universe and we're trying to see what's out there and which direction we should go. Now, the Eight of Wands is also saying, hurry up. The key word for the Eight of Wands in the Thoth deck is swiftness. Don't delay, don't hesitate. You know, um, don't let this process take too long. We've got to get a move on. I think this was a wonderful confirmation. And I think this really ties everything together at the end. And I like, I like this Five of Swords. I know the Five of Swords seems pretty dismal and hopeless and terrible, but no, this is really, this is really a hopeful card. It's talking about the movement of thought, right? It's not thought that is stagnating and stuck and frozen and not going anywhere. This is thought that, yeah, it may be confused and uncertain. It may be questioning and doubtful, but at least it's, Something's going on, you know, at least the wheels are turning. So I think this was a wonderful reading. Um, we're going to do an extended. If you want to stick around, you can click on the link that's up there and you can have access to all of the extended readings. Okay. This was your weekly reading, April 16th through 22nd on Dove and Serpent Tarot.